Well, today, the dictatorship that calls itself the kingdom of Saudi Arabia insulted the world with its written explanation of how Washington Post journalist Jamal Khashoggi was murdered inside the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. Here is the intelligence insulting written statement by the Saudi dictatorship, a statement which in and of itself is an offense against decency and humanity. Statement says, the results of the preliminary investigations revealed that the discussions that took place with the citizen Jamal Khashoggi during his presence in the consulate of the kingdom in Istanbul by the suspects did not go as required and escalated negatively, which led to a fight between them and the citizen Jamal Khashoggi, which aggregated the situation and led to his death. May God rest his soul. In addition to their attempt to conceal what happened and to cover it up, while the investigations are still ongoing in the case with the 18 detainees of Saudi nationality, the kingdom expresses its deep regret at the painful outcome and stresses the commitment of the authorities in the kingdom to bring the facts to the public as well as holding all those involved and bringing them to justice by referring them to the competent courts in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Now here is a picture of Jamal Khashoggi. He is obviously physically incapable of being involved in anything that could be called a fight with 15 Saudis who flew into Istanbul specifically to grab him when he walked into that consulate. Jamal Khashoggi was obviously physically incapable of putting up one second of physical resistance to anything any one of his murderers chose to do to him. Escalated negatively. It's hard to even call this language a lie. It is something far beyond a lie. Jamal Khashoggi was incapable of escalating any violence against any of those people who murdered him. Not for one second. The statement says the fight between them and the citizen Jamal Khashoggi, which aggregated the situation, led to his death. Apparently, they mean to say aggravated the situation. This poisonous, murderous dictatorship, which lives in its own bubble, believes it could send those words out of the bubble today. And somewhere, somewhere in the world, they would be accepted that someone, somewhere, could accept the idea that Jamal Khashoggi aggravated the situation and that led to his death. Saudi, Saudi Arabia, Arabia does not have anything that the real world would recognize as a court system, but the Saudi Arabian dictators believe they could put out a statement today saying that this case could be handled by, quote, the competent courts in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. There is no such thing. There has never been a competent court in Saudi Arabia. There never will be as long as the dictatorship is in place. And so who in the world who in the world would believe anything, anything in the Saudi statement today? Who would believe that Jamal Khashoggi was capable of aggravating the situation that led to his death? Who would believe that Saudi Arabia has competent courts? Who in the world would believe anything in that statement? I think it's a good first step. It's a big step. It's a lot of people, a lot of people involved. And I think it's a great first step. That's Donald Trump in Arizona tonight, in a meeting with defense contractors, when he welcomed this big first step that the Saudi Arabian dictators have made by issuing this statement that is a lie from start to finish. It was as if a scriptwriter had placed him in that setting today, in the movie of the madness of Trump. There he is sitting with the defense contractors who contribute to his campaign and who want to do business with Saudi Arabia, and he updates the defense contractors on today's news. 
Saudi Arabia has been a great ally, but what happened is unacceptable. We are going to see they, uh, they've arrested, just for the people at the table, a large number of people having to do with the event that took place in Turkey and the consulate, the Saudi consulate. And uh, it's a big first step. It's only a first step, but it's a big first step. Leading off our discussion now, Josh Letterman, national political reporter for NBC News. Also joining us, Ambassador Robert Jordan, the former U.S. ambassador to Saudi Arabia from 2001 to 2003. And Jeremy Bash, an MSNBC national security analyst and former chief of staff at the CIA and Defense Department. And Ambassador Jordan, I want to get your reaction first to the Saudi statement today. Lawrence, I hardly know what to say. Um, if it weren't so tragic, I would recall the, word, the famous words of Sergeant Schultz. I know nothing. I'm not here. Uh, it's absolutely astonishing that they would come up with this incredibly lame story. Uh, I think if there was a fight, it was probably Jamal Khashoggi fighting for his life as they were chopping off his fingers. Uh, but that's the closest thing to a fight I could imagine. It is absolutely outlandish. Uh, I, it's just uh, astonishing uh, that they have come up with this. Uh, ambassador, uh, you, you served as George W. Bush's ambassador to Saudi Arabia. You were there after 9-11 uh, until 2003. If, you, if, if President Trump had asked you to return to Saudi Arabia as ambassador, if you were ambassador there tonight, what would you have said today in Saudi Arabia? Well, the first thing I would say to President Trump would be our ally in this is the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, it is not Mohammed bin Salman. And I think you need to depersonalize this. We definitely need an alliance with a country like Saudi Arabia uh, in the midst of a very rough neighborhood in the Middle East. Uh, but I would caution him uh, against blindly listening to anything these people say. I'll give you an example. When I arrived in Saudi Arabia after 9-11, one of the first things I did was to go to Prince Salman then Prince, now King Salman. And I asked him, how could it be the 15 of the hijackers on 9-11 were Saudis? And you know what he said to me? He said, oh no, there were no Saudis involved in this whatsoever. These were the Israelis who did this. This was a Mossad plot. And that was the line right then that he was trying to give me. Uh, and it made me realize that you can't take at face value any representation they make. Uh, thankfully, we had uh, uh, more cooperative uh, heads uh, who worked with us at the time. But uh, this King Salman absolutely was in outer space then, and I think this government is in outer space right now. Let's listen to uh, President Trump tonight when he's asked the question, do you consider <laughs> this explanation by the Saudis to be credible? Let's listen to this. Do you consider it credible, their explanation? I do, I do. I mean, it's, again, it's early. We haven't finished our review or investigation, but it's, uh, uh, I think it's a very important first step, and it happened sooner than people thought it would happen. Uh, Jeremy Bash, uh, Donald Trump saying he takes that written statement to be credible. There are, there are so many things to take apart in it, but one thing that's kind of special for Donald Trump is uh, he and uh, his Republican friends have spent years screaming about Sharia law, screaming about uh, the kind of courts that they have in Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia says at the end of that statement, which Donald Trump now finds credible, is that their competent courts are going to take care of this. Yeah, Lawrence, I don't think that we are any closer to the truth tonight. And I think the United States has to conduct its own investigation of what happened. And I think we have to rely on our investigative authorities, but also our intelligence and our intelligence community. And the truth will come out because the Congress of the United States, as part of its oversight of intelligence, will ask the intelligence community, including our, our main agencies, what do we know about what happened? What do we know about this story that's being put forth tonight? What's fact? What's fiction? And I think the Congress, in short order, is going to well understand a lot more than we are being told at this hour. I, I want to go to one more thing that the president said tonight, because there is this just uh, just perfection about the setting that he was in tonight, sitting there with defense contractors, the defense contractors who contribute to his campaign, the defense contractors who want to do business with Saudi Arabia, no matter who they kill, no matter who they behead, no matter who they torture, they're ready to do business with them. And so is Donald Trump. Let's listen to what he said about continuing to do business with Saudi Arabia. 
On defense, we have $110 billion, and I would say almost 100 percent of it would be sitting right around this table. I, I don't want to look over and tell Marilyn or Dennis, uh, by the way, uh, we're going to take $25 billion worth of sales away from you, because that would mean a lot of jobs. It would mean a lot of everything. I'll be working on this with Congress. Congress is very interested in this one, and we'll be working with Congress. But I would prefer that we don't use as retribution uh, canceling $110 billion worth of work. Uh, Josh Letterman, in other words, he would prefer there be no retribution whatsoever, absolutely no price for Saudi Arabia to pay for this. Certainly not when it comes to arms sales. That's not really that surprising, I guess, because the president was very forthcoming about this even before the Saudis came out with their explanation. He said he didn't want to take that step. But here's what's so alarming about what we've learned tonight, Lawrence. Let's just for the sake of argument assume that everything that the Saudis said tonight is the God's honest truth. We're all talking about how incredulous their story is, but let's assume it's true for a second. That means that the Saudis, by their own admission, had their intelligence services send a team to a foreign country into a consulate to lie in wait for one of their own citizens to conduct an extraordinary rendition, got in a fight with them, killed him, and then conducted a cover-up to dispose of the body in some type of undisclosed fashion, while the Saudi government continued to tell the world for 17 days that he was alive and had left the consulate. None of that is even remotely acceptable behavior by international standards, even if what the Saudis are saying tonight were true. Ambassador Jordan, uh, would you expect uh, for Saudi Arabia to have anything that would resemble a public trial, a public airing of evidence uh, against the people who they're currently detaining? No, absolutely not. It will be conducted in secret. Uh, there may be a sentence handed down, perhaps even a, a death sentence. And then it wouldn't surprise me a year or two later after they stay on death row, you quietly uh, hear of a pardon clemency granted perhaps during Ramadan by the king. Uh, J J Jamal Khashoggi's editor at the Washington Post uh, tonight uh, tweeted this. Uh, she said, Khashoggi was a 60-year-old man. What sort of equal fight would he have had against 15 other men? And who brings a bone saw to a discussion? The stupidity of the Saudi explanation is mind-boggling. And Jeremy Bash, uh, that stupidity Donald Trump has said tonight, he finds believable. And the big question, Lawrence, really is whether the U.S.-Saudi relationship, because although obviously Mohammed bin Salman bears uh, sort of personal responsibility at this hour for what is happening in the kingdom and for how the kingdom is communicating with the world, there is no alternative to Mohammed bin Salman. It's not like the United States could snap its fingers and say we want somebody else in that uh, vital role as leading that country as the heir apparent to an octogenarian king. So there really is nobody else. And so the United States is going to have to decide over the next months and years how and whether and the extent to which to rely on Saudi Arabia to pursue American interests, to be a counterweight to Iran, to be a counterweight to Al Qaeda and ISIS, to be uh, involved in diplomacy involving Syria, involving other areas of the, of, the, of the Middle East that are vital to our interests. I think we're going to have to work with Saudi Arabia, but we're going to have to figure out a new way of doing so after this incident. Uh, uh, Josh Letterman, we're hearing, uh, as we have in the past, some noises from Republican senators objecting to what's happening and objecting to what the Saudis are saying. Uh, but it's hard for me to believe that there are any Republicans in Congress, and I mean any, in the House or the Senate, who would actually actively conduct hearings of any kind of investigation of any part of this, as long as the Republicans have that power. It's a good question. There are two senators who are on the Republican side who have been pretty outspoken about this in the run-up to this evening. That would be Marco Rubio and Lindsey Graham. And they have really pushed for a hard line, a hard response. Uh, there's been discussions about things like trying to block any future arms sales, cutting off discussions with the Saudis about a civilian nuclear agreement, what's known as a one-two-three agreement, uh, and other steps to try to create some distance from this government. But certainly, if the president heading into an election, is talking all about the jobs and the money that's coming into this country as a result of these massive Saudi arms deals. It is difficult to see how Republicans en masse try to oppose him on that and don't eventually go along with essentially maintaining some version of the status quo. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.